If you clicked on this video, then you know I am going to be giving you a writing update. First of all, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name's Karina. I am a Christian historical fiction author as of March 11th, 2021. My book will be releasing then. It is a Christian historical fiction novel for young adults called Free, and it's the first book in a series, Hope on the High Seas. So I spent about four years-ish creating, editing, and whatnot in that book, but I've had lots of other projects and you guys have joined me as I have vlogged while I have written some of those projects, but since getting knee-deep, or I think I would really call it more like up to my neck, in the self-publishing stuff, I really haven't been doing that much writing. The last time I really truly wrote was, I want to say, like the very beginning of December. And the reason for that was I did NaNoWriMo, and after NaNoWriMo I was so busy with getting ready to publish my book that I just really haven't felt like I want to take the time to work on a new story project. I don't think I would be able to get very far because I just haven't had the time or energy or creative power to do that because I've been putting all of that that I have left after other life responsibilities into self-publishing and marketing my book. But once my book is published, I do want to try to get back into doing some writing. And the problem that I have had is I have way more story ideas than I know what to do with. And all three of these story ideas, well technically it's more than three, all three of these separate kind of story concepts would all require quite a bit of moving and shaking as far as just a lot of plotting. One of them is related to my NaNoWriMo project that I did. So I'm kind of right now just circling and coming up with ideas and trying to figure out what I want my next project to be. Because right now I have three separate kind of ideas and not I'm not really sure which one I want to fly with. So without further ado, I'm just going to kind of vaguely describe to you guys kind of some of the different ideas I've had just because you might think it's kind of neat to see even though I haven't been writing and I haven't been vlogging writing I have had some ideas kind of on the back burner so you might just be interested in hearing kind of the gist of some of my ideas. So the first one is one that I have had some ideas for for a while and I actually originally wanted to write this as a screenplay. I even went so far as to start writing a treatment for it for something fun to do about a month ago and when I was bored during a football game one day I started storyboarding the opening scene just for fun. I do stuff like that sometimes. Sometimes I have an idea and even though I haven't even started writing it I will just come up with something like I'll write a treatment or I'll storyboard a scene from it. It does not at all necessarily mean I'm going to take it anywhere. It's just something that I wanted to do because it was fun. It was fun to try experimenting with storyboards and do a scene from the story I was coming up with while I was at it. So for a while I have wanted to write a story kind of taking the idea of the daughter of a famous pirate and making her into a character. Th this is too vague. Do I need to be more specific than this? So there is a infamous female pirate. As far as a historical figure, I encountered her a year or two ago and the idea of a woman doing what she did, being a pirate in the 18th century, for some reason that really kind of like resonated with me, not because I want to be a pirate but because there was something interesting about the fact that she could pull that off, the fact that she could actually manage to be a female pirate in the 18th century. And for me, more than anything, I was interested in the human aspect of it. Like, when we think of a person like that, we tend to think she must have just had no emotions, no womanness. She must have just been so tough and so resentful and, like, didn't love anybody. At least that's what I feel like we a lot of times expect. Like that from my perspective it seems like that's a lot of times the labels and the presentation we get when we have something as crazy as and outlandish as a historical female pirate. But for me I've always kind of wondered like what was she actually like? Like what was her motives? Like you know was there tragedy that made her the way she was? Things like that that interests me. But I want to make all of my stories like very clearly Christian. What's the word I'm looking for? Expli explicitly? I want all my stories to have an explicit Christian theme. Like I 
I don't want to make them vague. I want to cl very clearly have a Christian or gospel message in the books. And I didn't really feel like I could do that. That would seem really, really odd to take a pirate figure that is well known and put a Christian message into that. That just seemed a little far-fetched. But something that I did kind of like the idea of was maybe trying to tell a story about like her daughter or whatever. And so I thought that would be cool. I'm not going to go into details of the story because this is just something that I'm having ideas for and I may not end up writing any of these things. I'm not even completely sure I'm going to end up posting this video. It just seemed like a fun idea because I really generally don't talk about story ideas whenever they are this in the beginning of the process because I don't know which of these three concepts I'm going to end up running with and I don't want people to be disappointed if I don't go with whichever one they liked and it has happened before that I have had multiple story ideas at once and I have gone back and done some of the others and there have been times where I've just kind of let the ideas go altogether because I just don't really feel comfortable with whatever it was or I don't have the time to dedicate to it. So that would be a Christian historical probably action and adventure novel. More action and adventure than Free is. Free is not really an action and adventure novel even though it is you know high seas there is some kind of high seas adventure in, in that sense but it's not like a pirate story and who knows this idea is, could change and that's just what I was thinking She doesn't want to be a pirate like her mom She just wants to be a good moral person but turns out being a moral person is harder than it seems and that's why she needs God's grace and Find a way to put a Christian message in a story that's about a, an infamous female pirate's daughter. Does that sound fun? <laughs> I think it sounds like a lot of fun and I think it'd be fun to take a historical story and do that again because even though I wrote Free, which is a historical fiction novel, since Free I really haven't done that much historical fiction. I got a little bit tired of all of the research that goes into it. As I mentioned in one video before I did write a Victorian short story about a year or two ago, but other than that, I kind of have shied away from historical fiction for a couple of years simply because I was tired of it. And I think it might be fun to do this story as kind of getting back into historical fiction and do another historical fiction story. Also because I kind of want to establish my reputation as a historical fiction author before I try branching out into other genres like fantasy. I just feel like that would be a positive thing for my career. I wouldn't be afraid of, you know, releasing some short stories here or there or, you know, novelettes or whatever, but I kind of feel like to jump from a historical fiction series to a fantasy series just one and one would be a little weird, whereas if I've got a couple of books or whatever in one genre and then I change, it's a little bit less jarring, if you know what I mean. So that's that idea. That was That's what I was thinking as far as historical fiction, but as you guys know, I've also been experimenting for a little while now with the concept of doing Christian fantasy in a non-magical world and the adventures I've been having with that. So this next kind of update in story ideas is what I'm going to end up doing with my NaNoWriMo project. So I actually never completely finished writing my NaNoWriMo project. I well passed 50,000 words and if you would like to know more about my NaNoWriMo project or if you want to see kind of the process that I did in writing my NaNoWriMo project, I had a whole series of vlogs that I did. Uh, I have them in a playlist and I will put them down in the description so you can go watch those if you want. I did NaNoWriMo for the first time this last fall and I absolutely loved it. And I feel like the story turned out really good. But I never actually finished the ending because I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do with the book. Did I want to turn it into a trilogy or did I want to just leave it as a standalone? And which one I picked greatly affected the end of the story because in my original conception of the story, the antagonist was going to be defeated at the end of the first book. But generally speaking, whenever you have a trilogy in a fantasy story, you spread out the antagonistic force to last throughout the whole series, at least from what I know of fantasy. I'm not personally into fantasy, I don't know that much about it, but I wrote a fantasy kind of story. And I'm very, very intimidated by the idea of writing a, I believe it's called dynamic series. A dynamic series versus a standalone series, if I recall, and if if I'm getting them mixed up and dynamic is actually another name for a standalone series, I will write the actual term right here because there's a lot of terms and I get them all mixed up. But the thing that intimidates me about writing a dynamic series is that you can't just plan the first book. With Hope on the High Seas, even though each book builds on the last book, 
It's not like there's some driving antagonistic force. There's not some bad guy that spreads throughout all three books. There's not some particular quest they're going on that lasts through all three books. You're pretty much just following Ruth's life over the period of a few years, and each book is a new set of events that happens to her. Now, it's more exciting than that. It's not just boring everyday life, like, oh, today the chickens got loose or something like that, you know. It's hope on the high seas. It's still exciting, you know, and some rather unusual and extraordinary things do happen in her life, but with hope on the high seas, I'm less intimidated because I feel like I just kind of take it one step at a time. I have the gist of the series in my mind at this point. I didn't at first. Whenever I first wrote the first book, um, I, of course, wanted to write sequels if I could, but, you know, it wasn't until a little later that I actually was starting to really envision what the rest of the series would look like. And so that was pretty easy. That was just kind of, you know, steps in front of the other as far as the series of books in that sense. But for a fantasy adventure trilogy, you really want to make sure you know where each book is going to lead into the next book. And so that is really, really, really scary to me because it's hard enough for me to get one book outlined and then to try to outline all three. And I mean, I spent a month working at full power to get that 50,000 words for the first book. And you don't, you don't know until you're done, I guess, with the whole thing, if the whole thing all works together and it all works out fine and if it flows nicely. Like, how would you even beta read? that. Like, would you read all three at once? I don't know. You can see that I'm very, very intimidated by the concept of writing a dynamic trilogy. So that kind of leads me to the issue of I really don't know if I want to revisit my NaNoWriMo project and slightly re-outline it, bearing in mind what the main character's general arc over all three books would be and what the antagonist over all three books would be. But then I could also just leave it as a standalone. But I kind of had this big, grand idea that, don't get your heart set on it because it's, like, out there. But I also think it would be kind of cool to do a fantasy series that's got no magic and also has a strong Christian message. Something I should mention about my fantasy is that I al it also takes place in a... a it's like a make-believe world somewhere on the Earth. Like, it's not like super otherworldly, like it isn't any particular existing place. I completely make up like the world that they live in, but it still resembles Earth and they still are like Christians and talk about God because for me personally, I just I just always want to have Christian characters in my story. I know that a lot of Christian fantasy is allegorical and for whatever reason, that's just not what I like to do in my stories. I just really prefer to just have the Christian themes and gospel just kind of right there. It's just what I prefer to do in my writing. Allegories in a novel or novel series just aren't really for me and that's okay. It's okay if you like them and, and I don't, that's fine. But all of these worlds that I create in my fantasy books are fairly familiar as far as, you know, they're not like super otherworldly. They're just unique creative lands and sometimes, like I've said, there are dragons and sea monsters and things like that. But I thought it would be cool to make my NaNoWriMo project a trilogy, but then I had this whole separate other set of ideas for a more ocean-themed fantasy series. It kind of originally started as an idea for a sequel to my NaNoWriMo project, but then I realized that my NaNoWriMo project centers heavily around dragons and the sequel really didn't. If anything, it would center more around like sea monsters or like the Kraken or something like that. And so I had this idea for this whole world that's inspired by the idea of mermaids, but they're not actually mermaids, they're just people that, you know, have this ocean-themed clothing and kingdoms and they kind of live all by themselves in this hidden kingdom and, like, take the idea of mermaids and make it not magical and make them actually people instead of, like, mythological creatures. And that seemed like a really fun challenge to me because <laughs> I love taking concepts of story kind of components and making them something I would actually want to read. Personally, I wouldn't actually want to read something that had mermaids in it. I wouldn't want to read something that had magical mythological creatures in it. That's just a personal choice and preference of mine. And I thought, you know, why not take the kind of aesthetic and the themes of mermaids, you know, kind of this graceful, watery-inspired 
culture kind of a thing and make it actually like a human kingdom or in this case two human kingdoms and I was just fascinated by that idea and as far as world building concerns I much more enjoyed just kind of mentally coming up with the world building for this idea than I did for um, my NaNoWriMo project. The problem is that I originally envisioned this mermaid inspired story taking place in the same world as my NaNoWriMo project and so I'm not really sure what to do there because they aren't really related to each other but they both have some seafaring, they have, both have a heavy inst emphasis on like seafaring trade and ships and things like that and originally I was thinking that this mermaid inspired kingdom would be like the sequel to my NaNoWriMo project but they wouldn't really mesh enough and the characters wouldn't be reappearing so I could either have it like a spin-off series in another part of this world and kind of just use that as a way to drive more traffic to it because hey you know technically this does take place in the same part of the world as this other series but the problem with that is that I'm picturing the mermaid inspired kingdom series as a standalone series where each book kind of focuses on different characters whereas my NaNoWriMo project it would be a dynamic series spreading over a few different books most likely so I don't know like would you read if you read a dynamic series that spread over three books and there was a spin-off series of three standalones in a different part of the world that was you know say more sea monsters than it was dragons and they really didn't have much to do with each other other than the fact that it does technically take place in the same world would you be repulsed by that or would you actually like that or would you just prefer it if it was this is this world this is this world kind of thing the other thing is I was picturing the standalone series with the mermaid inspired kingdom as more of like a not fairy tale like there would probably be romance in it and I wasn't picked, my NaNoWriMo project does not have romance in it. Romance is something that for me, like, I'm still working at and I feel like it can be very sweet and can really contribute to your story. In fact, I did a video entirely on how to write Christian romance that's uplifting. And it's something that I feel like I'm starting to develop a skill for. And it's not like the things that I talked about in my video that I have a hard time with. It's more like making the chemistry work. Like in my Christian romance video I specifically talked about how to make it like uplifting and set good examples for your reader. I kind of have I figured out that part I think but the harder part is you know every time you work with a new couple you have to figure out how to work their chemistry and make them work with each other. And so romance is something that I'm kind of experimenting with. I do try to make it simple and subtle and you know not the whole focus of the story and I also like wouldn't want to repulse my readers because you know if most of my books don't have a bunch of romance and you know all of a sudden each book in this series was a romance story that might seem a little weird. I don't know. What do you think? Like obviously I know and you guys probably know that what's YouTube says I should write next isn't necessarily what I will feel called to write next. That being said, I still would like to hear you guys' opinions. It is very unusual for me to put myself out there in this kind of a sense, but I have seen some other people talk about their current work in progresses on social media and personally I enjoy when other people do that because it helps me see that like I'm not the only person that comes up with all these crazy fancy ideas and then works on them, gets stuck, gets stuck, maybe doesn't ever finish them, but at least it's fun to see what each other is working on. And also let me know like out of these series like which one would you rather read? Like would you read all of them? Would you rather only read one of them? And which one most surprised you is something that I would write? Because as I'm becoming an author, I think it's important as kind of being a wise steward of the platform God has given me to just be like aware of what you guys as my readers kind of think of me for and what my audience will expect of me. Because, you know, while I want to make sure I'm writing whatever it is that God wants me to write, I think there's also something to be said for being aware of what your audience expects from you. You know, if I literally were to never write romance, which I don't plan will be the case, I do plan to here and there probably have a courtship story or something like that. But if I literally never wrote romance and all of a sudden I wrote a romance standalone series, you know, my readers would be turned off because they're like, well, she never writes romance. Why is she writing romance? And, you know, they would probably come to me for the fact that I don't write romance. Whereas, you know, if I do occasionally write it, then, you know, it's no big deal. It's normal. It's just part of what she does. I feel like I am unusual, though, in the sense that I don't really fall into anyone with any of my stories 
of a typical category. You know, Christian young adult historical fiction is not a very big genre yet, and it's not like I'm Amish Christian fiction or just adult Christian historical fiction romance. I'm much more specific than that, and I celebrate that, I treasure that, and I believe, like, you know, I have I have seen that there are still readers for that, and I believe there are still readers for things like Fantasy with No Magic, where the characters are Christians in a very Earth-resembling place, or technically just a made-up land somewhere on the Earth, more of a fairy tale type of setup, even though they're not fairy tales. I think there are readers for that too, and part of the reason I think that is because I would have read that, I would still read that, but it doesn't really exist. And part of the reason that I became so passionate about writing is because there were many types of stories like that that didn't exist. There weren't like fantasy stories like that, there weren't pirate stories like I talked about earlier in this video, and part of the joy of writing for me is creating something that is a whole new thing and doesn't exist, even though, you know, I still would market it as something like, you know, young adult historical fiction or Christian fantasy, it's still going to be different. It's still going to be me, and it's still going to be what I personally believe the Lord put, calls me to put in my stories, even if that's different from what you would normally expect to find. And even though I know that could end up repulsing people, I, at the same time I also know that there are those of you already who love that and treasure that, and I also choose to celebrate that. And if you're a writer and you feel like there are aspects to your story that the Lord has asked you to put in your story, and you know you know he's asking you to put them in your story, but you're just not completely sure if people are going to want to read it, you're afraid your audience would be too small, don't worry. I've been there, I've, you know, I've wondered, is my audience too small, is anyone going to find this? You just write the story God wants you to write, and he's going to bring the people to you. I have already been so encouraged by the fact that the Lord has already brought some people to me that really, really want to read the kind of story that I'm writing, and, or in this case, that I'm self-publishing right now, and that's really encouraging. After, gee, it would have been about four years, I think, at this point. After four years of work, you know, just seeing the confirmation that even if it's only a handful of people, those people are going to be encouraged by what I do, and just confirming that, you know, this is something that the Lord has called me to do. Even though I already knew that in my heart, sometimes a little outward confirmation is also a blessing as well. So thank you to you guys who have supported me on this journey, and don't forget to let me know down in the comments if these story ideas seem like something you would want to read and like what in particular you liked about them. And also maybe if I should try and pick one of them to do for Camp NaNoWriMo because even with all the madness that's going on in my life right now, I really want to try to do Camp NaNoWriMo. Also if you have any tips for like how to spread out a longer project over a longer period of time when there's not something like Camp NaNoWriMo, like because Part of what I'm afraid is that like I'll only get 20,000 words and destroy camp NaNoWriMo and then I won't finish it. I loved doing NaNoWriMo because I got the story done in a month and then I didn't have to worry about it just being not finished. So if you have any advice as far as that, let me know too because I feel like I'm just constantly having to learn and relearn how to write in conjunction with everything else that's going on in my life because my life is constantly moving and changing and my schedule and the things I'm doing is moving and changing and things like that. So it's just, you know, life, we're never done learning and sometimes that drives me bananas and sometimes it just is a nice thing to think about because it means there's always something more to learn and always something more to discover. Never stop exploring. So thank you for watching this video. If you've gotten this far, you are amazing. I know I was a little bit random today, but hopefully you found this encouraging and maybe also encouraged you that um, having all these random story ideas, not completely sure what to do with all of them is perfectly normal. And I have that too. So thank you for watching this video. I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Get out there and write the story God called you to write. Oh, and in case you're wondering um, why my makeup is a little bit bolder today, you know, dark blue eyeliner or whatever I have on, I actually took some pictures this morning in a fantasy costume out in the snow because um, at the time of me filming this video we have a bunch of snow on the ground and I decided I wanted to try to do like a little bit of a different makeup look to go with the photos that we were getting to go with my outfit so if you want to see those if you kind of like costumes and costume photography and stuff like that head over to my Instagram because I put um, the different clips into a slow-mo reel for you so have a nice day see you next time bye bye